We all know MoviePass is coming back, but will it relaunch at the $10 price point that made it a household name in the first place? No. No, it's not. I mean, there's more to it, but no. No, it's not. Hey everyone, this is Kevin, the film critic from iCritic.net. Thank you for taking some time to be here. And we are going to talk a little bit about MoviePass today. And I suspect we will be talking a lot about MoviePass while they attempt this comeback, sequel, whatever the heck you want to call it. Now then, we all have heard the news that Stacy Spikes has repurchased his company, MoviePass. And I'm going to say, I've been on record, that under Stacy Spikes' leadership, MoviePass was amazing. I think it was priced appropriately. I think it was a good service. There is some question whether or not people valued a service like MoviePass because at $10, people flocked to it. At $20, people didn't flock to it so much. But I think people have gotten used to the idea now that I think if MoviePass came back at a $35 or $50 subscription, people would be much more open to it. But the question has come up. Will it return to the $10 price point? The price point that got... Movie pass into everybody's wallet and at the same time just crashed and burned the company. And this is not going to be a surprising announcement to the point where I don't even think this video is going to be very long. But no, it's not coming back. Stacy Spikes has made that abundantly clear. Now, this arc for IndieWire, and by the way, talk about um, being bought by Hulu. Just a side note. Stacy Spikes, the original MoviePass co-founder and its new owner, has long been vocal about the unsustainability of $10 per month, but he has a lot of ideas that could transform the post-pandemic theatrical landscape. MoviePass, the all-you-can-watch movie ticket subscription service that proved to be a smash hit with cinema goers until its extraordinary demise in 2019, could be coming back. Interestingly, I wonder if MoviePass would have been profitable in 2020 where people were paying for the subscriptions and not really able to use the service, but anyway. MoviePass co-founder Stacy Spikes took control of the company this week as part of the bankruptcy proceeding of the service's now former parent company. And he's quoted as saying, I can confirm that we acquired MoviePass out of bankruptcy on Wednesday. We are thrilled to have it back and are exploring the possibility of relaunching soon. Our pursuit to reclaim the brand was encouraged by the continued interest from the movie-going community we believe, if done properly, theatrical subscriptions can play an instrumental role in lifting movie-going attendance to new heights. He's, of course, set up um, that price point and everything. Now, of course, it goes over some stuff, like we've heard that before, and some of the history. But here's the key part of the article. That's all to say, don't expect any future iteration of MoviePass to repeat the same mistakes. Spikes has been quietly working on a plan to bring the company back since the summer. In October, he was part of a panel at New York Film Festival, during which he may have foreshadowed what movie pass done properly might look like. He's quoted as saying, excuse me, we founded movie pass in 2012, and just to be clear, I'm speaking of it through 2017 when it went off the cliff with the private equity group that bought it and thought $10 was a good idea. That would be sustainable, he said at the panel. Spikes has spoken out about his unease with that price point before. He told Insider in 2019 that he was fired from MoviePass shortly after the acquisition. So, here's the thing. Um, let's see, I think this has the quote, but basically, um, Stacy Spikes has gone on record and say, hey, here's the thing, we are not going to be returning to ten dollars a month it's just not going to work we don't think it can work and we just um it's just not going to be a thing now there is also another article by the washington post and let me see if i can't get this back to where it was this is what it looks like this isn't so much of an article as it is like a story thing this is something that news 
companies are doing now to try to get people interested in the news again who are used to like stories and stuff on Instagram. They do this stupid tap story thing where it's like, oh, there's a headline. Oh, look, there's the first part of the story. And then here's the next part. Um, so anyway, I mean, you know, it looks all nice and everything. That's not the issue. It's just I don't really read like reading articles like this. But here's the thing. It does have a quote from Stacy Spikes that was made a few days ago. And he said, the landscape back then did not have any competitive programs. Some research needs to go into that. Clearly, the $10 price point is not going to happen. Now, this article, even though, again, it's more like an Instagram story thing, goes on to quote like people who think MoviePass can succeed and people who think MoviePass can't succeed. I think it can succeed, big surprise. However, I also understand that there's a lot of hurdles there. There's especially a lot of broken trust there with the movie past name. And yet, it's still a catchy enough name that why would you want to get rid of it? So, here's the bottom line. For those of you who are wondering, will it come back the $10? The answer is no. In fact, look, even in this image itself, look at this image. Like, look at this movie ticket. $10, uh, $16.29. That's one movie ticket no company can lose like seven, five to seven dollars on one movie ticket from the first use and charge ten dollars and then what happens when these people start going to these movies over and over and over again and then there were some people who crazy enough were signing up for movie pass and seeing a movie every single day we're talking about hundreds of dollars a month now why isn't anyone doing that with regal unlimited even though it's only like thirteen dollars more guess is as good as mine I don't know maybe it's just not as much fun when you don't feel like you're getting away with something even though under those circumstances you would be paying 2350 a month plus thirty dollars in seat locator fees and you would still be saving hundreds upon hundreds of dollars but maybe it just doesn't feel like that I don't know maybe it just feels it feels like you're not getting away with anything but here's the bottom line I'm looking forward to what movie pass will look like when it comes back I still do not know if I will subscribe to it. I hope that there is a reason to subscribe for it, but I'm really rooting for this company. You know, you watch people who've watched my channel for years know that I really love this um, service. I loved this company. I actually held on to them until they went out of business, and you know that I have all the subscription services except for Alamo Draft House because the nearest Alamo Draft House for me is like an hour away, and you know. But yeah, I have Regal Unlimited, have the Cinemark Movie Club, and have the AMC Subs A-List. And yeah, if I could cancel a couple of those services and replace it with a movie pass, I would be more than happy to do that. We're just going to have to see what the company looks like in the future. But anyway, I would like to know, what do you think? Are you terribly disappointed that the $10 a month isn't returning for movie pass, or do you totally understand? Or do you think that maybe they should at least consider the $10 a month? Like, you personally feel that $10 a month is the price point where movie pass can be successful. It'd be interesting if there are still some people out there after everything that's happened, but I would still like to hear your opinion. So comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.